morning, Faith. I can't tell you how excited I was when Mrs. Anderson asked if I could be part of this service with you. I just want you to know that uh, how much I miss all of you guys and what an amazing adventure it's been for for you and for me. And as we look at the last five or so years, especially for the class of 2017, just know that I've been praying for you all along. So let's get into it. Let's talk a little bit about your journey, about the transformation that you guys have had for the last five years. So here's your scripture verse for the year that, as I remember, Romans 12, verse 2. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. One of the great things I've been thinking about as we look at transformation, and even over the last five or so years that you've been there and my time at Faith, is how transformation creates something new in all of us. But the transformation is not just about a physical change or even an emotional change or even if you just grew bigger or whatever it is. It's an opportunity for us to see how our minds have been changed and everything in the view or the lenses of the cross. And our truest form of transformation is through our minds, a renewal, you know, a making new, something that, that, that blows our minds and this world, in a desperate attempt to make us drown in despair or sorrow, and seeks to pull us under the waves of fear and the fury of the storms of life, it threatens to consume us. And here the author, Paul, writes to a group of people in Rome to say, don't give in to this, don't transform to what they're trying to say, don't conform but be transformed because transformation brings new life and a new vision and a new outlook on the hope of an exciting and fearless future for all of us. Listen to what Mark has to say. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let's go over to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. But there were other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke up over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Be quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. And then he said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? Then they were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. The gospel was obviously written after the events of Jesus' gruesome death, his miraculous resurrection, and definitive victory over death and sin, the devil, and get this one, and fear. John, or John Mark, the gospel writer, is doing what we sometimes in my own life, I think we call it reflecting or reminiscing or, or just plain remembering, going back over life and remembering the stories. And perhaps just then, like we do today, a smile comes over the disciples' faces or all those who are hearing it, and they get this, this sense where they want to say, you remember when? You remember when we were on the other side of the lake and in the boat, and Jesus says, let's just go to the other side. No reason, just a, a friendly float across the sea, a nice little cruise. It's not like they were alone. There were other boats that were going to. And the onlookers were doing just what they needed to be doing at the time. No particular time in their lives, just hanging out in the boats. And all of a sudden, this furious and frantic storm blows up. And oddly, Jesus is sleeping. He can sleep through the storm as if it's nothing. But the disciples, unprepared for this part of their journey, for something unexpected like this to come up, a true storm that they never saw coming. They're fearful, they're afraid, afraid for their lives, and they wake Jesus up and wonder if he really cares about us. If Jesus really cares about us. 
Why are these storms happening? Do you ever feel like that in your own faith journey or your own journey at Faith Lutheran College? Remember five years ago at Luther Heights and our first opportunity to be together kind of like the setting off on a ship, a pushing out from the shore unsure of where this boat was going to take us? And remember as we set out from what seemed like the safety of familiar land, we wondered what the purpose was, what we were going to learn, if we were going to even make it through. Remember the storms of years nine and 10 and 11. And lastly, this year through the exams, the storms of exams, the assignments and relationship problems and tragedies, messing up with friendships, acting out, probably not doing the right thing with your teachers. And it seemed as if our entire world was simply going to capsize and we were going to drown in our despair or drown in the future, the unknown future. And remember when we just want to shake Jesus and wake him up and say, what are you doing? Why are you sleeping through this? Why are you sleeping on the job? Can't you see that life seems out of control? Don't you even care about us? And then we saw Many times, Jesus gets up, tells the wind and the waves, you know what, knock it off. And then a calm comes, like a calm that comes after every storm. And he whispers to them, what are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? What are you afraid of as long as Christ can control the storms? This is the ultimate transformation, isn't it? The ultimate renewal of our minds. That throughout any storms that are present in the future and any storms of the past, any storms of the present, there is no need to fear. It has no use. It's useless. This is from Hebrews. Hear what he says. Since all children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity, so that by his death he might destroy him who holds the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who all their lives have been held in the slavery of fear. The fear of death, the fear of the nothing, the fear of the future, whatever it is, Jesus came to free us from fear, and through his death and resurrection, you can be free. This is the ultimate transformation. Jesus came to eliminate the fear of death so that we might truly live. And when it feels as if God is sleeping on the job, it is for our benefit to stand together in the face of the storm. I have no fear because Christ is and has always been with us. Class of 2017, do not fear, but have faith. Don't be conformed to a world of fear and anxiety and despair and destruction and violence, but transform your minds in the living, breathing, walking hope in Jesus Christ. God bless you, and I pray that I'll get to hear the remembering of your life cruises someday. God bless you, my friends. Can I hear an amen?